Are you struggling to come up with original content week in and week out? Start a podcast. Interview your ideal clients. Let them talk about what they care about most and never run out of content ideas again. Learn more at sweetfishmedia.com. You're listening to B2B Growth, a daily podcast for B2B leaders. We've interviewed names you've probably heard before, like Gary Vaynerchuk and Simon Sinek, but you've probably never heard from the majority of our guests. That's because the bulk of our interviews aren't with professional speakers and authors. Most of our guests are in the trenches leading sales and marketing teams. They're implementing strategy. They're experimenting with tactics. They're building the fastest growing B2B companies in the world. My name is James Carberry. I'm the founder of Sweetfish Media, a podcast agency for B2B brands, and I'm also one of the co-hosts of this show. When we're not interviewing sales and marketing leaders, you'll hear stories from behind the scenes of our own business. We'll share the ups and downs of our journey as we attempt to take over the world. Just kidding. Well, maybe. Let's get into the show. Hey, everybody, Drew McClellan here from Agency Management Institute. Welcome to another episode of the agency track of B2B Growth. Happy to be here as your host again. For those of you that are not familiar with Agency Management Institute, we work with agencies, small to mid-sized agencies. So what I say is anybody from a couple FTEs to a couple hundred FTEs typically. And we help those independently owned agencies and their owners build a more sustainable, more scalable, more profitable agency that you can use as an ATM machine to make your goals as an agency owner come true and also make the goals of your employees and your community come true. And so what we spend a lot of time doing is talking about the fact that most agency owners are accidental business owners. And so they are awesome at the client-facing work that they do but they struggle with running the business of their business. And what AMI comes alongside those agencies does is we coach and teach and share best practices around how agencies that are financially successful, that are have built a sustainable business that uh, weathers storms, weathers recessions, weathers all those things, how you do that, and then how do you decide what the future of that agency looks like, and then march it successfully to that future. So today what I want to talk about is the decision-making that happens inside many agencies. And the reality of it is that many agency owners didn't take a lot of leadership classes, might be very natural leaders, might be super charismatic, but we struggle a little bit with decision-making inside our shop. And part of the reason we struggle with that is because We want everybody to like us and we want everyone to like all of the decisions and feel good. And the last thing anybody wants is a disgruntled employee in their office. And so oftentimes we handle decision-making a little passive aggressively. So we often allow, although it annoys us and we're frustrated by it, we often allow our employees to have a bigger voice in some decisions where quite honestly, they just shouldn't have a presence or they certainly should not have a vote. But we don't really know how to handle that. And so it feels awkward to just announce a decision. So I'm going to teach you a technique that many agency owners use that they have found is super effective in terms of being able to drive decisions through the organization with the right amount of input from their team. And so this is a technique that I taught a couple years ago on my own podcast, Build a Better Agency. And we got such great feedback on that episode and on this sort of decision-making hack that I wanted to make sure that I shared it with you too. So this is what I call um, the three levels of decision-making. And it's super simple. And what you do is you say to your team, you bring your team all together and you say, hey, you guys, I want to have a little more clarity around how we make decisions. And I want you to understand sort of what level of decision we're making and what level of involvement you get to have in making that decision. So from now on, anytime any of us are asking people for input or telling people about a decision, we're going to use this common language. We are going to call this the three levels of decision-making. The third level of decision-making, if I say this is a level three decision, what I mean by that is that we have a decision to make 
And I would like all of us to participate in that decision. So I or someone else on the team is going to outline what our choices are or what um, our options might be, the consequences of those options. We're going to have a lively discussion to the extent that we all think that we need to. And then when we're ready to actually make a decision, we are all going to just vote. So it's going to be very democratic. It's going to be basically majority wins. So a decision like that might be, where should we have the Christmas party? Hey, we're going to do some sort of a community service event. Let's decide which charity we would like to benefit from that. Decisions like that, where everybody gets has a stake in it and everybody has a say in it. That's a level three decision. A level two decision is when a leader inside your organization or you perhaps as the owner are going to say, you know what, this is a level two decision. And what that means is we have a decision to make and I'm going to outline what the decision is. I might outline again what the options are or what the consequences of some of the options are. And then I'm going to seek input from this group of people that I've gathered. It might be the entire agency. It might be a department. It might even be the leadership team. But at the end of gathering that input, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back into my chambers, if you will, like I was a judge, or I'm going to go back into my office, or I'm going to take the weekend or the week to mull over what all of you have said. And then I'm going to come back and based on my own opinion and the feedback that you gave me, I am going to tell you what the decision is. So unlike a level three decision, you don't actually get to vote but you do get to express your opinion and sort of point out the pros and cons of each option. And we can have a lively debate. We're just not going to make a decision as a group. I'm going to take all of that in, factor it all in, and come back and tell you what the decision is. Now, a level three decision, there is no voting. There is no staff input. This is a decision that I believe as the owner of the company, or I believe that a leader, a department head inside the organization, I believe they need to make this decision on their own. And so the way that decision is going to show up inside the agency is, hey, I made a decision and here's what it is. So that might be things like the deductible on our health insurance or uh, what kind of uh, PTO benefits we're going to offer or if we are going to send people to a conference, or if we're going to start offering a new line of service, some of those decisions may very well just be announced as a decision that has been made without anyone's input. What I love about this model is, uh, and what what I've seen happen in many, many agencies, is the minute you teach people this, and you can tell them it, but the way you teach it is actually by demonstrating it, by actually implementing it inside your organization. And it does a couple things. Number one, it takes all of the pressure off of the leader or whoever's triggering the decision-making conversation to not have to worry about sort of passively, aggressively trying to control the conversation or uh, discourage people from voting or having a strong opinion because you get to decide on the very front end here's how much involvement is going to come from the team. And you're going to announce it at the very beginning. Hey, you guys, we have a decision to make. We have to decide how we're going to handle our charitable event this year. We have to decide uh, if we are going to have t-shirts printed. And if so, what's going to be on the t-shirt for the 5K run we're sponsoring, whatever it is. And this is a level three decision. I want everyone's opinion, and then we're going to vote. So you're going to just announce it at the very beginning or, hey, you guys, our health insurance is coming due. And I just want to let you know that that's a level one decision. So I'm going to be coming back to you in a couple of weeks and letting you know what I decided the agency is going to do around health insurance for the employees. And that'll be everything from the deductible to how much we pay versus how much you pay, whether or not we're going to help with the cost of your family's insurance, whatever all those things are. I'm going to come back and tell you what that decision is because that's a level one decision. So what this tool does is it eliminates confusion. It brings clarity around every decision. And when you start modeling it as a leader inside the organization, one of the things that I see happen over and over and over again is that everyone adopts this. So whether an AE is leading a kickoff meeting or your social committee is having a meeting about what they should, you know, is it going to be a pizza party this month 
or are we going to do Cinco de Mayo Day? Or you have to make a decision around whether or not you want to be a pet-friendly office. All of those decisions, whoever is sort of in charge of managing that decision, will start using this level three, level two, level one criteria to inform the audience, whoever that may be, of how the decision is going to be made. So what this eliminates is confusion. It eliminates frustration on the team's part because they thought they were going to get to vote because we let them vote on a lot of things that quite honestly, they probably shouldn't be voting on. So they're used to having a voice. This is a particularly important sort of skill or hack if your agency is growing. Because when you're an agency of three or four or five or even 10 people, it's kind of easy to do everything as a tribe. It's kind of easy to make all of the decisions together. But as you get bigger and as you have layers and you have departments and you have managers versus rank and file employees, all of a sudden, that decision making of everybody huddle up and decide something together is awkward at best and ill-suited for the business at worst. You can really end up making a lot of bad decisions when you let everybody weigh in on everything. And so this is a tool that you can use to sort of evolve your agency in terms of its decision-making as the size of your agency evolves. So that's it. It's a level three, a level two, a level one. And the quicker you can implement this, a great way to implement this is when you actually have a decision to be made Uh, and or you have a series of decisions to be made that would fall in at these different levels. The other thing this is going to do is it's going to force the leadership of your organization, whether that's you or someone else. It's going to force you all to accept the responsibility of the decisions that truly should be yours, but we often involve other people because we don't really want to make that decision or we don't want to get blamed if the decision we make is a bad one. So the other thing I love about this is it, it it levels up our leadership and it forces us to step into that role and embrace both the good and the bad, which is we have responsibilities. And in some cases, we are shirking those responsibilities when we make everything sort of a group vote when really it's sort of inappropriate. So that's it. I hope it was helpful to you. I will be back soon, I hope, with another episode. In the meantime, come on over to Agency Management Institute and check me out there look at our workshops, our courses. If nothing else, please subscribe to our podcast. We have a new episode every week. And all we do is talk about agency management and leadership and growth and culture and all the things that are weighing on your mind every day. And we're trying to answer those questions with subject matter experts who have a depth of expertise in serving agencies. So I would love to see you over there. But if not, stay right where you are. And I will be back as quickly as I can with another episode. Talk to you soon. We totally get it. We publish a ton of content on this podcast, and it can be a lot to keep up with. That's why we've started the B2B Growth Big Three, a no-fluff email that boils down our three biggest takeaways from an entire week of episodes. Sign up today at sweetfishmedia.com slash big three. That's sweetfishmedia.com slash big three. Thank you.